Hi and welcome to tutorial 63 in this series of tutorials and programs that focus on TradeStation Easy Language. If you're not part of our email list then please go to markplex.com that's m-a-r-k-p-l-e-x.com and I'll be happy to let you know when I create new tutorials or release new programs. So in tutorial 60 we created a program, an indicator, that looked for what we call CCI trend lines. Basically we were looking to connect two CCI pivots and then trying to detect when the CCI broke that trend line. And you can see here on the chart program 60 applied to a, uh, a chart showing the, the CCI and the trend lines and the trend line breaks indicated by these little X's. Now I had a client who uh, asked me, well, how could I use this to screen a large number of stocks? And a good way of doing that is to use radar screen. The trouble is we, we cannot just simply modify this program to use radar screen because the, uh, the lines that we've drawn here, we're not only using them as a way of uh, visually being able to see the uh, quotes trend lines on the chart, but we're also using them as a way of detecting what the price is at any one or rather what the uh, the CCI value is at any one point in the chart using um, TradeStation standard uh, TL series of functions. So we need to find another way of doing that and uh, actually it's not too difficult. So what I'm going to do in this uh, three video series tutorial is demonstrate how we can modify the program so that it will work both on charts and on radar screen. So let's just go to the program and what I've done is uh, I've created a new program here, Tutorial 63, uh, which is exactly at the moment the same as Tutorial 60. And uh, what we're going to do is just go through and modify it so that we can use it on both charts and on radar screen. OK, so the first thing that we need to do is add a few variables that we're going to use throughout the program. And uh, we're just going to copy these just to make it a little bit quicker and uh, control V and I'm going to call this one new val this bar and this one's going to be new val last bar. The other thing that we're going to use is an additional array. The, uh, the array in the original program stores information about the trend lines, for example, the trend line reference. What we're going to need to do is uh, is store information about the uh, trend lines that does not use the uh, the TL drawing functions. So I'm just going to call this new TL array, and it's going to be a little bit bigger than the uh, previous array. It's going to have four elements in the first dimension and eleven elements in the second dimension. We're just going to set all of them to be minus one initially and uh, press semicolon. OK, so if we go down to the program where we uh, do the initial drawing of the trend lines, what we need to do here is make a modification so that this part of the functionality here will only work if we're applied to a chart. In fact, we're talking about this part of the functionality here because this one here, the counter, we're going to need that also with the radar screen. So there is a way of doing that. And uh, what it is, is is a function called get app info. And uh, this can provide you with a great deal of useful information. The particular one that we're interested in is get is AI application type. So if we just uh, go down here, we'll see that actually that is available there. And a chart, for a chart, this returns one. So we can just add this here and go begin. And then I like to just uh, tab the elements within a begin statement like so, just so that we can keep track of our begin and ends and make sure that they're matched up. So this will only now work for a chart. I'm just going to put in the end statement like so. And then we're going to add 
some functionality that will only work when applied to radar screen. So we're going to go else if, and then we're going to use a similar construct here. But instead of being equal to one, we need it to be equal to two, like so. So we're going to go then begin. And we'll just put our end statement in there, ready. OK, so if you think about, just go back to the uh, the chart for a moment. At any one time when we've reached the second pivot, in order to be able to project this line forward, all we really need to know is the, the bar number of this particular bar, the CCI value at this pivot, and the slope. And then for any future bar, we can, sim we can work out the value just by a simple calculation using the slope and the, or the original value at this bar here. So let's store those necessary values in our new array. So we're going to go new TL array and square brackets. And we're going to have several elements here. In fact, what I think I will do is just put those first, and then we can explain what's going to go in there. So I'm just going to copy these. Oops, Mr. New TL array. Okay. So we're going to have four all together, and uh, we're going to have zero, two, and three in this part of the array. Let's just put in our equals. Okay, so in the first one, what we want to put is the uh, the bar number of the anchor bar, in other words, the second pivot. So on the chart, we're talking, for example, here, it would be this bar number for this one if we were talking about this trend line here. And we calculate that by simply taking bar number, which is a standard trade station function that just increments every single bar. And we're going to de de uh, deduct from that O piv bar one. And that is the actual number of the, uh, the number of bars ago that the, uh, the pivot occurred. I'm going to refer to this as the anchor bar. We need to store the value of the anchor bar, which is actually very simple. We already know that. It's OPIV CCI1 in this case. Then we need to calculate the slope. And the slope is equal to OPIV CCI1 minus O piv cc i2 close brackets divided by the number of bars over which we're calculating the slope which is o piv bar 2 minus o piv bar one simple slope calculation and then the final thing we're going to s s store in here is minus one and this is just telling us that we have not actually found a crossing of that line so far which uh, is uh, similar to this setting here in the uh, in the initial part of the program that only is used on charts so anyway what i'm going to do is just uh, replicate the equivalent calculations for the next part of the program. This uh, is dealing with the, uh, the top pivots. We now need to go and do the same thing for the, uh, for the bottom pivot. So what I'm going to do is just stop the recorder and then start it again when I've done that. OK, so you can see I've now added the equivalent uh, functionality for the, uh, the bottom pivots here. And uh, we've left this part separate. We've added the, uh, in fact, that should be get application info uh, application type equals one 
for this part of the program. Then we've added the new functionality here. And uh, instead of using OPIV bars one and two, we're now using OPIV bars three and four and OPIV CCI three. And uh, otherwise the, uh, the logic is the same there. And in fact, I just noticed up here that I also forgot to include a then. So let's uh, press F3 to verify and see if we have any errors there. Okay, we do have an error. Let's just go back and have a look. Okay, we, we misspelled the get app info incorrectly there as well. F3 again, spelt it wrong there. It's the problem with, uh, with copying sometimes. F3 again, to verify. Okay, and this time we're good. Okay, so that is part one of the, uh, the tutorial. What we're going to do in part two is now see how we can access that new data that we've stored in this array to be able to detect uh, crossings of the uh, CCI trend line by the CCI. This is part one. See you at part two. Thank you.